What's going on, guys? Triple G here with my buds. Super Scotch 300 and. Meaning Spring 68. Awesome. We are here to pretty much do the same thing we've been doing for the past zombie attack series, which is doing a director slash producer commentary. And because ZAL is pretty massive and in terms of like how long the episodes are, and there was a shit ton of stuff that, that happened. Unlike the oh, previous yeah. commentary videos, we're not really going to go through the episodes piece by piece and in order. We're really just going to be talking about like general things like uh, things that went in production and things that were easy, things that were difficult, behind the scenes stuff, funny stuff that you guys may not have known about, and uh, all that good jazz. So uh, basically, I'll just go ahead and start. Mm. When uh, we first started to, I guess, get near the end of Series 3, it was my intention at first that we were going to end the Zombie Talk saga there. But then there were rumors that, you know, GTA 5 was coming out or a trailer was going to be released pretty soon. So me and Colin kind of, you know, and behind the scenes, behind the curtain, mm -hmm. whatever type of pun you want to put it is. Yeah. Uh, we basically started to go into the idea of what if we continue the series in GTA 5 and then just, just make it work. And I'm like, you know... Considering the rumors behind of how massive GTA 5 would be, that would be a pretty cool idea. Mm -hmm. So we just decided to finish Series 3 as we had originally written it, and then we gave you guys a little tease at the end after the uh, end credits in Episode 10, Series 3. And, of course, we released some trailers uh, a few months later, and obviously ZAL came out. And there was a, uh, I guess you could say, I don't know, a clusterfuck time trying to get the series going, and uh, I'm sure Colin will be able to explain it a little bit more, but I just remember uh, the reason why there was like so much delay in making it. Well, for one, was GTA Online wasn't really functional when it first came out. No. Like, we all thought that it was going to be uh, released at the release day of the game, but that was just for single player, so then we had to wait a month for GTA Online, so like, okay, let's wait, and then when we finally got into it, it was just not working no, at all. No, it wasn't. It just really wasn't. Yeah, what I'm glad. It was. I, yeah, that makes me glad I didn't have GTA 5 at the time. I didn't get GTA 5. And, I didn't get GTA 5 until like Christmas. Mm. I think uh, the problem w we had when, like, let's say when we started up filming episode one, because a lot of the a lot of the ideas that we had for ZAL, um, the, a lot of the ideas that were implemented were planned hugely in advance, like around the time, like towards the end of se uh, series three, when we started talking about it, as you said. Um, most of the things that we planned, like what vehicles we, we were going to use in certain scenes and things, ended up being in GTA 5 anyway, which was handy. So most of what we see in there is pretty much word of mouth for what we came up with originally. But mm. like Josh said, the problem with the online is that we were under the impression or hoped that there would be some kind of private mode where you could edit settings in the game, you know, weather and, mm -hmm. and you know, turn off police and things. And when we got the game, we were unpleasantly surprised to find out there was nothing like that. It's just bare bones online, cops all the time and pedestrians. And really there was, it was, it was a task, wasn't it? Compared to series three, where it was, it was extremely easy to set up a session and just bring everyone in. With the online, we were under constant pressure from, you know, the police in the game, uh, money issues, you know, because you have to have money to do fucking anything on GTA Online, and there were people who weren't, like, mm -hmm. leveled up properly. See, that's the thing, with GTA 4, there was a max level of 10, wasn't there, and in fucking online, you really need to, like, delegate time to leveling up before we can even film the shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, but personally, I'd like to say leveling up in GTA Five is less is less of a pain in the ass than it was in GTA Four. Yeah, Four Four was slower. Five is is grueling, but it's not nearly as slow. Um, it's more fun, I guess. But with with Episode One, um, what what's what's that to say with Episode One? I I think a couple of things. I remember everyone was really like you know looking forward to doing Episode One. We got everyone in fine. Um, the scenes where we had James running from the police. Uh, and then getting captured. Like, do you remember the truck scene where we were able to get everyone into the army truck? The military truck? Yeah. That didn't go down to so well in the beginning, did it? Everyone was <laughs> fucking around. Like, people were jumping out the truck. I think if you look in one of the scenes, you can still see it in the actual episode. The truck has tires in the first shot, and then in the later shots, it's missing tires. I think it, yeah. that was because yeah, of police. Yeah. yeah, we had police issues straight away. Of course, back then in the early episodes, we were blessed with the ability to glitch inside of buildings. 
which was fucking awesome, and I miss that because a lot of it's been patched now. You know, we got inside the police station, which I thought was amazing at the time. Um, it's so yeah. funny you mention that because what's what's kind of such a slap in the face to me is a GTA Five for Xbox or next gen consoles, Xbox One, PC, mm-hmm. and uh, PS4 is a lot of these buildings we had a glitch inside to, you can just walk into now. Which like the police station. Oh, uh, no way. I, th- I think, um, yeah, that warehouse, uh, call me and you go on to that and how much of a pain in the ass that was, yeah. but that warehouse where uh, James wakes up and he meets Cypher for the first time, that's enterable now, <laughs> wow. as opposed to when you had a glitch inside of it. I think the only couple places where you can't get into is uh, that one in episode two where uh, James and Eli were in that gold tech factory. I'm pretty sure you still can't get in there last time I checked unless you glitch inside of it somehow. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because, uh, yeah. And by the way, I would like to, you mentioned the police station. I would like to point out that at a time in 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 last gen GTA 5, in last gen GTA Online, there was a time when, where, where you, while you couldn't use the front door of that police station, you could use the back door. But now Rockstar's, and that wasn't even a glitch, but now Rockstar sort of patched that to where, Patch that for some reason to where you can't even enter the building. Period. Now yeah. in last gen. Yeah, it's stupid. I mean, but um, I, I was really, I was really, I gotta say, even though it was a big pain in the ass to get into those places, I'm really satisfied that we were able to actually get into those because I think it made the the episodes that more interesting. Like our original plan was. If we couldn't get inside the police station, which we were really annoyed we couldn't, we were going to film into like that garage thing that you saw in the uh, yeah. official trailer, which I mean is okay, I guess, but it wouldn't have looked nearly as cool as it does in the uh, finished episode. So, despite all of the annoyances we had trying to get in there, the end result was really satisfying. Mm-hmm. And especially, holy fuck, <laughs> <laughs> I remember how annoyed we were trying to get into that fucking factory in uh, episode two because i don't know if you guys know this but between episodes one and two rockstar came out with all these patches which made getting into buildings a much more pain in the ass than it was yeah um i think like after all of us kept trying to do this glitch where you would basically stand in front of the door you would select a mission or uh, no you wouldn't select a mission you would try to buy something but you didn't have enough money for it so it would take you to the uh, marketplace mm-hmm. to buy more of those shark cards or whatever mm-hmm. and then you would just immediately back out and then sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't and what you, what happened was you would, you would appear inside the building it doesn't work anymore of course because rockstar patched it fucking assholes yeah. but um it was annoying at first it took us like almost two hours just to get everybody inside of there and i think how we were able to get inside everyone into that building was Everyone just kept doing it over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. That eventually they were just able to, I guess, knock it down and get inside of there. But I remember how absolutely fucking annoying it was trying to get into that factory in particular. Because that one was a hit and miss, really. I, I mean, I understand why it's it's blocked off from players. Because it's, you know, now it's used in the heist missions. And you, you have the whole, you know, the humane labs well, heist. And it makes sense. Well, I think you can still probably get in there. Maybe with a glitch. But it depends. Yeah, on there, kind I of think glitch. there still yeah. is a glitch that you that you can use to get in there. It's just a different one. You just can't use the you can't use the garage door. You gotta you gotta go to some pipes around the back, yeah. and then you gotta select. You gotta get in between them. You gotta select a mission. Yeah, you gotta like select a contact mission, and then you gotta back out of that mission immediately, and then you're in. I, it, regardless of the method, I remember that when we were filming it, Josh, didn't we have um we had Mo in the game, didn't we? Or am I thinking wrong? I think we did actually, but I. I don't remember him actually being in the. Oh, was it Manny? Edit. Didn't we have Manny in the game? Like the Manny. Yeah, we had Manny. Yeah, because I, I I remember like you and me were in the building and we were in the like the do- the storage area and we were looking at the uh, the gate trying to wait for him to come in and then there was a point where he just sort of phased in through the wall. Like, no, but did you remember there was a, a portion in which you and me were like waiting in front of the front gates and then we just saw him because we were trying again and again to get him in. That was the problem we had getting everyone else in. Um, because we mm-hmm. needed multiple people inside. I think inside. I got it on. I think I got it on a few tries. Yeah, so. it takes a few tries. But remember, we saw him sort of um, appear in through the gates, like he he faded in. And as soon as we got, saw him come in, I just remember you going yeah, like really loud, and we just started cheering. <laughs> it was epic, but it was a challenge, yeah. you know. And, and like I said, with with legacies, everything about it is different in a way. Like the production of it is completely different from series three because you know we had full voice acting. That had to be done separately on a different occasion with different voice actors. And all of the in-game actors, the body actors, you know, had to know exactly where they were going to be. And we had to coordinate everyone. And it was difficult, you know, because no one really knew exactly. 
a, a lot of our extras didn't know where they were going to be, and we had to kind of direct them, and it was fucking difficult and stressful sometimes. But yeah, and and on top of that, they also had a tendency to mess around, especially Welsh. Whenever Welsh was around, <laughs> you had you had to be wary because that dude loves to fuck. That dude loves to fuck around. I appreciate him, and I and I love what he does to help out. But damn, does he? Well, yeah, he yeah, fucks I appreciate about, him yeah. too. I mean. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it too. I think we that's, all that's the only annoying thing about filming is uh, you have people sometimes forget that we're filming like a series episode, and they, you know, it, we are in a video game, so it is pretty easy to fuck around and stuff, especially in a free roaming game. And it, it's kind of it can be difficult for you know being somewhere for hours and just having to list new instructions. So I get that, mm -hmm. but I really hope that. You know, with this next one, that people will, you know, after seeing how much effort and time and effort we put into legacies, they'll say, okay, let's, you know, do the best we can to make revelations as best as possible. I mean, I know it is pretty easy to just, you know, fuck around and stuff, which is fine. I mean, we do want to have fun, but at the same time, you know, we got to get these fucking things done. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, now, uh, it, it, what else should we talk about? In the sake uh, of episode three, I was going to say, because in episode three we had our first full, like, major zombie fight scene, didn't we? And mm -hmm. for me, that was the, po the point where I realized that the cops were going to be an issue, because we had everyone gathered in that, like, central square area, and, you know, not only... Yeah, I mean... We, we had friendly fire, you know what I mean, from our own actors, and we, I remember I died, like, twice, um, but we had the fucking yeah, cops did, on us. We, we had cops everywhere, you know what I mean? So... That would, that's when I knew it is it kind of annoying be because issue. everyone has to be like a certain level. You have to be at that certain level to unlock that feature where the cops turn blind eye with Lester. But I forget what the exact level is. But some people uh, had that level, some didn't. I think it's like one of the more early on levels. Probably, I think it's like one of the most uh, one of the more early on levels because I think my female character, yeah, my secondary character, uh, she's like level twenty five or twenty seven, and I think I've already got that unlocked. Mm. Yeah, I can't remember the exact level, but. Yeah, the, the I think the most difficult thing filming Legacies period was um, not necessarily you know people messing around and stuff, which was a, a big issue, but definitely yeah, the, the biggest issue police. was the cops. Oh, if yeah. if if there was a way just to turn them off, we would have easily like legacy like, filming Legacies would have been a thousand times easier. We had the blind eye. Yeah. We we had we used overused the blind eye. The problem is you know is the blind we had eye. To. It has limits yeah, the, and shit. Yeah, and I fucking yeah, problem, hate yeah, I fucking the hate the, the delay you have like after you use it you have to wait a few minutes to use it again. Mm. So yeah, here are the problems with the blind eye. It it is expensive. It cost it cost uh, $5,000. Yep. It it only lasts for 3 minutes and then you have to wait like like 5 maybe 10 minutes. Yeah, between like five and ten minutes or something like that, to for it to for you to be able to pay for it again. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise you're just gonna have to deal with the cops. Exactly. Mm. On the topic of your female, um, what you said, your female character, I just thought it'd be you know uh, proper, shall we say, to you know give proper thanks because like, we didn't have any female voice actresses or characters in the in the series until Legacies, and I just think you know it's it's a good time to tonight give thanks to you know Candice Candy for doing the work, Tivaria Sailor Peace. For doing her work yeah, with Maya yeah. and Eris, yeah, great job. Subscribers, actually. Yeah, really good voice actress. That was really good, and I, and I think honestly, yeah. when when did it come a point? Because uh, we were looking for voice actresses, didn't weren't we? Like we were talking about it, and I just kind of at some point went, oh yeah, my friend Candy kind of thing, and then she nailed the fucking part, and now she's just with us completely. So yeah, it's really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have anything bad to say about her voice acting because that was that was pretty damn good. Yeah, actually, um, on the topic of voices as well. Uh, Eli, one of our you know staple characters in Legacies, that I I had no intention of voicing, uh, honestly. From the when the the series started, I I thought we're gonna get someone to do Eli, but when it came when push came to shove and we had episode one, we didn't have someone for Eli at the time. And I think on the day that we needed the the lines, I was really fucking sick, and I just put a mic in front of myself and I recorded like talking from the throat kind of thing. Like really low kind of voice, kind of, and I, and it was it, yeah, and you made him sound so bad. Yeah, and, and I and I kind of went, this sounds okay, and then it became Eli's voice. You know, like no one could recognize Eli without that voice, and I think that's important to note. You know, the the I don't know how to describe it. The the way we had to change what we planned, if you know what I mean. We not not, not mm -hmm. everything went to plan, but we had to make exceptions. But those exceptions ended up working in the benefit of the series. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and another thing. Uh, speaking of other 
voices. Uh, I would like to point out my character, Eddie. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, Josh here told me, when Josh gave me the part, he told me that I needed to make Eddie sound psychotic, so I tried, so I tried to, so I tested out a few voices with him listening, and, uh, and, uh, whenever I finally nailed one, it, it was something like this, motherfuckers! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to do it. Uh, yeah, Josh said that that was good, and he also said I also needed to work on a bit of a laugh, so I tried my best. So I tried to make Eddie sound as psychotic as possible, and I'd say, I'd, and I'd say I did a good job, and I'm certain a lot of people could agree with me. Oh yeah. Uh, you see, the reason you see the reason why Eddie was like that for those of you that are watching, it might be new to this. Uh, Eddie, uh, Eddie's a serial killer, of course. I mean, he is a hero in the series, but he's technically an anti-hero. He doesn't he doesn't really want to be where he is, but he's just doing it because he has no other choice. And besides that, and the fact that the infection's claiming lives that he believes he should be claiming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very it was very different yeah. for us in the series because I mean, Josh, you and I talked about it ages ago about the potential of having. A character who was a serial killer in the show that was completely different from anything that we'd ever done before yeah eddie was uh first mentioned in uh the ganglers of new york right kurt yeah. mentioned him mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. how far back we had it planned you know what i mean yeah. so it's it's yeah. incredible to think the process of coming to that point but what about um because i i mean the only other things i could go on about episode three is you know the jet scenes which weren't too much trouble because it was you know jet it was two jets and it was all that wasn't really an issue what yeah, yeah i mean the only I thing we had to worry about which uh, I which happened almost happened to me a couple times, but the only thing we had to worry like we did we did have to worry about cops during that, but the only thing we had to worry about was those helicopters. I don't know if you noticed because a lot of it I cut it out, but there were so many times where like my heart almost just like exploded, like because my heart was beating so fast and it almost mm -hmm. exploded because there were so many times where there would just be a random fucking police helicopter. <laughs> That would just go poof that I almost ran into. Mm -hmm. That happened so many times that I almost had a heart attack. No joke. Yeah. And yeah. We would have, I would have to go all. And this was before the uh, that military update or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. where you can finally uh, buy a Hydra. Mm -hmm. But if oh, I were to Hydra. die, if I were to die, I would have to go all the way back to the military base. There's no way in hell I'm getting there. You know, just sneaking in and out because if you try to take a jet, you're going to get shot down if you get caught. So I would have to go to the military base. Spend five thousand dollars on blind eye, and then get a jet back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every, every and time another thing I would like die. to point out, I think uh, I was one of the. Uh, for those of you that might not know, in episode three, I was one of the zombies. I was flying a jet, and I and Josh actually had to try and speed away from me in his car. Yeah, James had to try and speed away in his car to get away from <laughs> me. But it, there was this one point where I accidentally, where I used the cannons. And I didn't realize what the cannons were capable of at the time. I didn't really know all that much. Mm. But apparently I found out what the cannons were capable of, and I learned why they were called cannons, because I accidentally shot I accidentally shot uh, the car. I accidentally shot the Rapid GT that Josh was driving, mm. and uh, I had um, blown it up. Yeah. Like, the, like only Those like things are so overpowered. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, it was a couple of bullets, and that thing, and that car just went bye-bye. And I... I saw it too, like when you shot the missile, it, like it looked like you didn't even aim it at me, like you were deliberately trying to shoot it away from me, but then the, the fucking missiles, thing is guns. like, is so, I guess the homing on it is so sensitive to other players that it just saw me near it, so it just like, it did this curve thing, it was going right towards me, and I'm like, wow, this is gonna be so cheap, and then I blew it up. <laughs> Well, no, I didn't use missiles when I was chasing you. We were almost at the airport, and I used the machine guns. Yeah, the cannons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Your, your pilot yeah, is power, too. Yeah, and, that, and the machine guns, for those, of you, for those of you that are new to GTA or haven't played it at all, the machine guns, the reason why they're called cannons is because they shoot explosive rounds. Like explosive rounds, rounds yeah. I have to say, shoot like, explosive 50 cals. Justice's piloting in, in those scenes was, was fucking awesome, because, like, we, you came down pretty low in some shots, like, almost, all, like, I think on one of the highway Yeah, shots. I was so disappointed when really I was the first low. one to get taken down. Yeah, it was really, I, it <laughs> like, was tense. Like, freaking James you know? owned me! Yeah, I want, I was... I mean, that's how Raider zombies are, you know, they're extremely skilled pilots. Yeah, I was, well, I was yeah. in the game at the time. I've always had a talent for driving. I was in the game at the time, and I remember seeing you guys on the map, like, going all over the place, and thinking, like, I was looking at the blips, going please just one of those blips better not disappear you know i was like please don't fuck it up you know what i mean we got this kind of thing it was really tense but it was good uh this is something that i've always wanted to talk about the fight scene in episode four that are we talking tank we talk them um, the tank scene it's it's still one of my favorite oh, yeah, fights yeah 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 I, there's personally a part of that it's I my favorite about. fight scene in the whole series it is actually fucking epic to be honest 
I yeah, did, obviously, uh, for those of you that have seen the first Transformers, it was heavily inspired by that with the music mm-hmm. and, you know, the different shots and stuff. But the reason why, I don't know why, just something about it. Like, it's all the, I guess it's all the different camera shots, isn't it? It's all like the camera the shots, and, and, and it feels it feels quite like a lot's going on, you know? You had, you had um, Stephen and everyone, like, over the radio to Eli. There was a lot of people involved. You had the president watching it over the, the screen. Everyone was watching that fight, you know? Everyone was there. It was a big deal, you know? It was it was an awesome yeah, scene. Yeah, Colin, you mentioned you mentioned Eli was there. Of, well, of course he was there, but I had to actually I had to actually control Eli's movements actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that ex- and so yeah. So for those of you people that didn't notice, I I was using the advanced rifle. That's my preferred weapon. I was busy controlling the one of our new characters, Cipher, you at were the time. C- controlling Cipher, I believe. Yep. With his staple weapon, the pump action mm-hmm. shotgun. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think honestly Colin... that makes sense. <laughs> I think me and Colin did a pretty good job of masking Cypher's identity, and he only spoke when needed it to. And then, of course, there was the big reveal at the end that he's that he's uh, Carter, and mm-hmm. you know, people had some people already figured out how he's alive, but a lot of people still have questions about how it'll be explained, of course. But um, I really did like how you know how well we kind of kept him secret and mm-hmm. he only yeah. spoke when he needed to and whenever he did speak it was fucking epic like I think one of my most favorite lines from Cypher is uh, right when episode 4 ends and he's like let's go fucking kill them all and then yeah. it just cuts wait that was episode wait no that was that was episode 8 8 yeah oh yeah that was 8 sorry <laughs> yeah that was a good <laughs> one for those of you that don't know uh, real quick I'd like to point out that was that was the episode when Eddie when my character Eddie died and so, yeah, yeah let's talk so, about that death scene yeah Colin yeah. loves that it is it is so it's, Colin explain why you like it because episode eight is Colin's favorite episode and here's why well to be honest like what it is for me is that there was a point in it where because I I'd been voicing Keon which was one of the new villains in the series and I knew that this was going to be the episode where he was going to bite the big one as well. So I was, everyone was trying to put their all into the voice acting, and I think what I love about it is... I know it, I know it sounds strange, but like, you know the black, you know where it cuts to black and white, and it's, you know, all around me are familiar faces, just instrumental version. And Justice is... Oh, yeah, yeah. Justice is uh, your voice World, acting yeah. as well for, for Eddie during that final phone conversation with James. That was really good. Like, that, that like, tore me up when I watched it. Yeah, thanks, because, I mean, I knew Eddie, Eddie might seem like he's a bad guy, but if, once you get to know him, he's actually a good guy. He just needs friends in his life, and so that's what James, so that's what James and not so much Eli, but I'm going to include Eli, James, Eli, Maya, and Cypher. That's pretty much what they were to him, and especially James, and so mm-hmm. Eddie, and like Eddie said, James was the best friend he's ever had, yeah. and so Eddie, he... He was willing to, and so that tells you Eddie's loyal to his friends. Yeah. He's he's just like any other hero. Like. On the flip side of the voice acting, Josh, you when you were portraying James in that episode, on again it was on that phone call scene. Your your like lines of "Don't do this, please." Those like pleases that you said was like the, the how strained they sounded. In my opinion, was some of the best voice work you've done at James in the whole series because they sound genuinely like 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 genuine pleading. You know, like there's no other hope kind of thing. Mm-hmm. That's why I love it. It's well, the voice work. It's the the way because we didn't have too much issue filming it from what I recall. I think everyone was kind of behaved that except day. for that. Except for. Uh the the first time when we tried exploding the gas station and I think someone um, accidentally shot one of the gas tanks. Oh yeah. And then uh, I also blew up somehow in sort of the chain of explosions, I guess. And mm-hmm. we all had to drive away and come back. But after that little, well, there was that, and there was also the uh, getting the subs, which was oh. really fucking annoying. Yeah, the subs. Yeah, and, we had to go to uh, different places on like... the map, didn't we, to find individual subs? That took us like an hour. It that was did. Such a pain. Yeah. And people kept fucking blowing the subs up, and they yes. kept running into each other, and they kept blowing up, and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, and me? also, another that? thing that happened in, uh, two things that I want to mention in episode eight. One, uh, one, that was actually one of the episodes, that's actually like, uh, the second episode where, I believe that's the second episode where our new friends, uh, Captain Jack Beast and, and MC Hail God actually, actually came into play, and I believe it was MC Hail God who actually, when, when he, when he was flying, I believe he was flying the helicopter that was near James' sub, and um, he jumped out, dived into the water, and apparently he was running down there. He wasn't swimming, and he didn't have to deal with air. It was as if he was on land. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Which another we thing. We used to our advantage in one of the scenes. Yeah, it was to our advantage. But on the, on another hand, it was also kind of strange. But we were fortunate enough to have that glitch happen. 
Uh, but yeah. that's fixed now, of course. But anyways, um, another thing I'd like to point out is the fact that when Eddie, when Eddie was going to sacrifice himself, he was driving a monster truck. And yeah. personally, and I'd also <laughs> like to point out, this is me making a joke right here. I'd like to point out Eddie was driving, Eddie was driving the Liberator. He was driving an American-themed monster truck. So, America, fuck yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I remember, like, when I don't know what yeah. when the decision was made to include the monster truck yeah, but, as his vehicle. Yeah, but with all, we got. Him, but... But with all, I bet there are plenty of people asking, where the fuck did Eddie get a monster truck? First he gets, first he gets a couple of, first he gets a couple of the, first he gets two of the same bike that happen to be two of the fastest bikes in the game, and then yeah, he gets Batty 801s, and then and now in his death scene, he's driving a fucking monster truck to his own doom. It's Eddie, man. He's resourceful. <laughs> it's Ed, he's Edward fucking. Yeah, I, yeah. that's what. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, Eddie's Eddie's not just like the world's most dangerous and greatest serial killer. He's also extremely resourceful. I think he's one of the people that believes that if you're gonna <laughs> be that good of a serial killer, you've got to be resourceful. While we're yeah. talking about Eddie as well, episode I believe it was five um, when Eddie was first uh, revealed and included the prison. Remember the prison scenes we had to do? Yeah, yeah, we had to. Yeah, yeah. we had to actually do that in a death match that you made, Colin. And you actually had it yeah. in the tank. That I, was I a just... good. That was a good add-in. But the only problem, though, I mm. couldn't really shoot at the tank. I, I, uh, I think I could have. I mean, I had it. I had a grenade launcher, well, the, but I didn't the, have the, the main reason why we had to go in death match for that is because, if you guys already know, for those of you that play GTA all the time, when you actually go into the prison, it's kind of like where you, um, in GTA 4, whenever you got into the runway, you would instantly get like four or five stars. So we. We didn't have a choice. We had to go into yeah. deathmatch mode, and that's kind of why our our characters were like constantly like jittering or whatever while they were just standing around. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the biggest problem we had with filming that scene was uh, the fight scene because we couldn't fucking see anybody on the radar. No one can know anyone. Where yeah, anyone and not was, only that, and we constantly had to look around. And not only that, like, there's oh, come on, give me someone yeah, to shoot. Yeah, not only that, there's also the there's also the point of us of us ending up killing each other by accident. Like killing mm -hmm. those. That yeah, we because don't the lock-on is way easier. Like I don't remember <laughs> yeah. if I died if I died from any unnecessary deaths at all. But if I did, then we then we've had the fall of Edward. Then it probably happened several times, and we probably had the fall of Edward, of Edward Gray <laughs> several times. Yeah, yeah but there was so the much fall of everybody really. <laughs> Yeah, yeah the in fact, on Colin, is really Colin, super uh, sensitive. If we ever do need to do that again, I actually, I actually do have a suggestion. We should probably make it a team death match instead. Yeah, good point. Yeah, probably should have been the decision. Yeah. Yeah, um, but instead, no, we had episode... to do free aim. We had to do, we had to do like auto aim because we had to do like, well, not auto aim. We had to do like free aim. We had to like hold the aiming trigger halfway down, yeah. otherwise we would have locked onto each other, and that would have been problematic. Uh, for episode mm -hmm. six, I remember there was a lot of problems in episode six when we were filming it. Um, oh god, yeah, that's that's one thing I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about. This I know one. what you're gonna say. Yeah, I want to talk about this one thing, people. This is something that happened behind the scenes, and it made Josh here just burst out laughing. He literally said that he couldn't <laughs> breathe. Yeah. He literally said that he couldn't breathe. I was, we were at the top, we were at the entrance to Zeke's base, to Zeke's hideout mm -hmm. under in the in the sewers underground, and um. Well, I was at the part where I was at the part where I was supposed to run away from it out of fear. I, I was supposed to have Eddie run away from it out of fear, and we actually had to film this part twice because I ended up fucking up in, at the start. And I wasn't even trying to fuck up. I just what I did was I what I did was I I said my lines I said my lines and then I ran out into the middle of the fucking freeway and I get plowed by a yellow <laughs> buffalo. I just get plowed and murdered by a yellow buffalo, and Josh is like, <laughs> "It was amazing because seriously, like we were, you were part way through a line. You turn, you go. I, I remember looking and being like, what the fuck is he doing? Like, there's there's a highway there, and then it just, you, like I said, it comes out of fucking nowhere. It, it's all, it was great because you were I'm part like, way through, yeah, going, I'm like, like you were going, ah, like running, and then it's just, boom, and I was, yeah, like, I was like, oh like, my god, yeah, I was like, ah, never again. Ah! <laughs> I just, I, that ah there was because out of nowhere I just get I just get smacked I just get bit slapped by a car. It was amazing. Yeah, that, that, was was just that, that was that. That was that part. That it, there was that part filming it, and the other really annoying thing was uh, it's it's really quick, and I really had to heavily edit this part, and it didn't really go as planned, so a, a lot of it was cut out. But 
It's it's that part where it's the end of the chase where everyone's on the bike and everyone's at the end of the chase. And uh, yeah. we, we had a yeah. bit of a problem the, with like, friendly fire, right? The original plan was the dam was going to be blocked off by some zombies, and they didn't really do a good job with that. Nope. And um, there was the and basically Cipher was supposed to come in swooping in with his helicopter and give them some covering fire while they uh, jump off of the bridge. That seems a lot shorter than I had planned to because I had to cut out so much of it, but the main reason why we had so many problems with it is because there was like three or four people that we tried to use to fly that helicopter and every single one of them crashed. Yeah, they just, like, that's why the shot cuts as the helicopter comes down because right after that it plowed like straight into the ground, didn't it? Like twice I or something. I would have flown the helicopter if I had the chance, but unfortunately I had to stay there and be as Eddie because we needed Eddie. In fact, no one else actually controlled Eddie ever. I was always the one to voice him. I was always the one to control him. It, no one ever controlled or voiced him. No one else ever controlled or voiced him. So yeah. I would. So yeah. had it. So had it been another. So had it been in any other situation, I would have. I would have flown the helicopter in. But at least jumping off the the, the dam was pretty. Yeah. Epic. But oh, mm -hmm. another thing I'd like to point out is my voice acting for that episode. I didn't. I was sort of doing like quiet yelling because I didn't want to like annoy my family. But um, well, I was a bit scared of it. But still, I. It was still uh, that's that's what Josh and Colin here talked to me about. Uh, I think Colin was the first one to talk to me about it. I don't remember which one of you guys was, but still, um, mm. I don't remember. But still, uh, yeah, they talked to me about that. My voice acting was good, but it just I did quiet yelling. I did I did I did uh, close I did pretty damn close to whisper yelling, and it wasn't real yelling, which I needed to do real yelling. But I was just worried. But I was just worried uh, that I annoy my yeah. family. Uh, but they don't. But they don't mind because I'm just trying to help out. Because I'm just trying to help out now. I realize that now. And yeah. another yeah. thing, um, as Eddie, I had to use the word "cunt" several times, and my <laughs> my mom hates that word. But she doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't care me. as long as I'm just saying it for the series. For as long as I'm just saying it for the uh, for the series. But. Um, had I said it in any other situation, she would have. I'm taking her word. She would have blistered my ass. <laughs> Back she hates that word. That word is the worst in her opinion. That word is there's no <laughs> word she hates more than that. And her and one of her friends, Cecilia, yeah, Josh, you met her. Yeah, she uses that word. I, she's never used it around me. I've never heard her say it, but she, but mom says that she uses that word a lot. Oh god. <laughs> oh, the um yeah. Oh, I was trying to think in in episode uh, 7. I was just skipping forward in episode 7. Pff, the only thing I can oh, sh Okay, uh, two things. Jet scene that we did. Um, mm -hmm. And the train. Those, for me, were those were the two big problems. Oh, yeah, yeah. Josh posted we... a video. Of, Josh posted pretty much a, a blooper video of the train scene. The, the train part was so damn annoying that I decided to keep the bloopers for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and honestly, I, I, wish we, I wish we had bloopers for the entire series because I know Josh's favorite part would be when I got plowed by a car. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly, I think that that train, that one train scene, because like I said, we had trouble with the jets, which I mentioned in a, a voice uh, voicing video behind the scenes kind of thing. We just basically had a lot of troubles with the uh, Xbox Live was just being completely shite that day and kept disconnecting us while we were in the jet. So like we'd see the jet in front of us, like Josh would be chasing me and then my jet would just drop suddenly and we'd both like did lag out and disconnect and we had kept having to reconnect. Uh, what, was, um, what was that episode where uh, they meet Maya back at the... What? At the uh, Nepo headquarters? I think it was, was episode six. Ev episode beginning six. of episode six. Yeah. I don't know if you remember Colin, but Xbox Live during that first scene was just oh, shitting yeah, I remember that. So it bad. was, yeah, I remember yeah, that. Was, remember that, was, that? Because yeah. and now that you guys, that you guys don't that see we, so those, you guys don't see it, but basically what was happening was uh, it was between Justice, Colin, me sometimes. Everybody was disconnecting over and over and over again. To the point was just getting super annoying. And the part where they all get into the truck and basically drive away, what happened was, it was so hilarious, the first time we all did it, 
and um, I think one of us took too long getting into the truck, so it looked stupid. And then um, I think Calm was like, "Come on, let's scoot over <laughs> quick, quick, quick!" And I'm like, "Okay, okay, okay, guys, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go! Hurry, hurry before it gets connected! Go, 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 go! Get in, 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 get
it'll just, I mean, if I just, if they just let me land, sure, what they're doing is faster, but it, it but in the end of it all, it doesn't really matter, because it, in the end, if they just let me land so they can get out, I, I, it'll just, and let me come to a complete stop, they'll just take no damage, they'll just be able to get out just like that, without having to take any damage. If that... Surprisingly, um, well, in my opinion, at least, a lot of the fighting scenes in episode 10 were actually not that difficult. Mm. Primarily because we were just, you know, we were out in the boonies at the time, you know, filming all of these and stuff. And um, the, only, the only major difficult one I remember, which not surprisingly is when uh, that part where Cypher picks up uh, James with the cargo bomb from the tank. And um, I just remember how annoying it was trying to, you know, get that at the perfect spot and picking up everything. But the fighting scenes themselves, like the ones at that motel and stuff, yeah. was surprisingly uh, not as difficult as many other fighting scenes were in. I remember a pretty difficult one was was the one in uh, episode 5 over at that, um, I forgot what you called it exactly, but you know what I'm talking about, where, where they're in the forest and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it's basically a trap set by Keon and whatnot. And... <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you guys could see it, but I did a pretty good job of editing it, but it, the fight would have been a lot longer had the fucking cops not kept coming up. Like, you guys might see, like, some destroyed police cars and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. They just kept coming. It was so damn And we annoying. just have to, and I'd say we would just have to have people say that that would be the cops coming to help James and the others, but that would be the cops coming to help James and Eli, but, and help kill the zombies, yet the zombies were just, I'd like to say the people should be thinking that, but yet the, yet the zombies were just dominating the cops. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. But yeah, it's yeah. The main problem was the police, and we had to work our way around it and stuff. And it was really just filming, you know, the fighting scenes piece by piece. And what else we really like about Legacies is it doesn't really focus on the action per se. It mostly focuses on like you know the story itself, and a lot of the dialogue scenes are really like, like especially a lot of those dialogue scenes in Episode Nine where. Uh, James is talking to Eli, and James is talking to Maya. I thought those were done. Yeah, and well. also, speaking of the part where... Yeah, that's <laughs> where... Yeah, and honestly, I'd like to talk about those two parts, actually. Um, when if I'll start out with the one where James is talking to Eli. Uh, when... Yeah, when James and Eli are talking, you know, they're just drinking, they're just drinking beers. Um, yeah, that's when you... That's when people really start to see why Eli is the way he is. That's when people... That's when people realize that Eli, why Eli is the way he is, you know, like he, why he's a bit of a hard ass, why he's sort of, like, he, why he's tough to bond with, and why he can be tough, and why it can be tough for him to bond with other people. I'd like to, I'd like to compare him to Joel from The Last of Us because that's the way Joel is, pretty much. Like Eli lost mm -hmm. someone that was dear to him, and and so did Joel, and so yeah, those two became a couple of, those two became a couple of major badasses. But well, Eli's been a badass longer than Joel, but still. They, but still, they both also became like hard asses. Like you know, they just they. It was as if they just didn't care anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, so that's when people can. That's when people. Sorry if you heard me cracking my knuckles. Uh, that's when people can really <laughs> bond when with Eli right there at that moment. Just like uh, when, just like when Eddie was explaining himself. That's when people could really bond with Eddie. You know, because Eddie was explaining himself. Eddie was explaining the the reason why he is what he is. Uh, but for the for Eli's you know scene with him and James, um, there was a, I I really like I tried to put a lot into that the voicing on that bit because it was you know it was a very emotional scene and there's a lot of re revelation for like you know Eli's character and things. I look back on it and I actually don't think I did a great job, if you can believe it. I I I don't think my my voicing was perfect. Um, no, you did a good job. I'm, you did a good job. I mean, there were some lines that I think could have been delivered in a different way, but overall, I was quite happy with how it turned out. And then it was followed up with the awesome Maya scene that oh, we yeah, talked about talk for about like that, you yeah. know, yeah, we talked about that way back, me and Josh, like how that we wanted that scene to go down. And it also hinted a lot about James's character and like his mentality and what could be happening to him mentally from losing, you know, people in his group and things. Oh, so it was yeah, a very yeah. important he scene, one of my favorites in the whole series. When James and Maya are talking, you can actually. Yeah, event during eventually during their conversation, you can actually see how those two are actually developing feelings for each other, especially Maya towards James. Yeah, because I mean, mm -hmm. it was very that, that it was it was the first time we'd had any kind of rom romance or love in, in like the series, I'd apart like, from you. Um, and I'd like to Charlie. say this one thing that I keep on saying every time I see that part: James so got laid. 
<laughs> well, I thought that was what it was heavily implied. But, well, yeah, uh, okay. But it, anyways, yeah, it, about Curtis. It happens exactly as you think it happens. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, about Kurt. So, so, who wants to How begin? long were we planning that for, Colin? <laughs> oh my god, like, dare I say, late, like, again, like, back when Kurt was killed off in Series 3, <laughs> not soon after that, we were already planning his return. We were we were pretty much like I, I either I I know you were convinced that you wanted him to return at some point in some big big way, and you know we were co you were coming up with um, Zeke's character, his personality, and his relation to Kurt, all of which was like a huge run up to the fact that Kurt's gonna bust in suddenly out of fucking nowhere, and just be like yo this is my territory get the fuck out basically. But um what I really like about uh, Kurt's return though is. In a way, he kind of redeemed himself, didn't he? Like, he was, like James said, for the first time in his life, he was fighting for something other than himself. He felt like he was fighting with the purpose, and that's kind of why he lasted for a lot longer than he did. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And that's kind of what made him stronger in a way, too. And I also, uh, I like the way he went, you know? He kind of went going, you know, he, he, he still had a bit of hate in him, but at the same time, he... He died knowing, you know, what he, what he believed was right. He knew, he actually knew that he was going to die when he fought Zeke, but he just didn't care. Yeah, about. and mm -hmm. also I'd, li I'd like to point out about what Kurt was saying to James when Kurt was dying. Um, yeah, Kurt, that's where you actually do get to see that Kurt, he actually, he actually, you can actually hear him say that he pretty much realized what he was doing was wrong and that it wasn't really worth it. Yeah, you, he mm. actually thought that it wasn't really worth that all that he's that all that he's done wasn't really worth it, you know. Like he, you know, like he, you know, I mean, and you also get to see that he just didn't want to be evil, you know. He just he didn't want to be well, evil. I'm... He didn't mean to do evil things. It's just that he was just trying to make the world a better place. I think it was a combination of of many things. Kurt's character. I think it was, <laughs> I think it was to do with, you know. It, Procassium's influence over him and his mind, and I think it changed him, and it was his father. You know, he wanted to make the world a better place, but ultimately he ended up doing more worse than good, and then, in retrospect, after everything that had happened, and after, he, you know, his abilities, his, his immortality had left him, he looked back and he went, what have I accomplished? And he looked at what was going on, and he went, there is more destruction now than there ever was before, and this is because of my doing, this is because of what I did with Zeke. So yeah, it, it really did come down to the question of was it worth it, really? Yeah. It wasn't I mean, the you know I, I'm sure he, if he had the choice he would still take over the fucking world, probably just to make it a better place. But being that he could never do that now with Zeke in the picture, he just the ended, he ended up looking going why? Yeah, and he was dying. He was just there like now what? What have I done? Kind of. You I mean know? he's been yeah I mean he's been good. on he's been coming closer to the I mean even if he had beaten Zeke even if he had killed Zeke still Kurt still wouldn't be able to rule the world because Kurt. Sooner or later, Kurt would just die out, anyways. Sooner or I, I, I believe if Kurt in in in, in like the like ten percent, five percent chance that he would have beaten Zeke, I believe Kurt would have almost immediately been at like taken down by Nepo. That's what I believe. Well, yeah, I mean, especially Kurt, Kurt's not Kurt's like, not immortal. Nepo doesn't Nepo doesn't even need their special guns to take him down. Pretty much anything can no, kill it, Kurt now. It was Maya who stated herself that if, if, if Zeke was like Kurt, it would be over already. They could easily take down someone like Kurt. Of course, Kurt had changed over the years and had actually gotten more power. But especially like Josh, I'm sure you and me know some of the, you know, things that we have planned for revelations and certain pieces of technology that are going to come into the story. Kurt wouldn't have stood a chance. So, nope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Kurt might have had greater strength, but w Josh actually told me this himself. Uh, Kurt did probably have a chance at beating at beating Zeke, but because of Kurt's skill, Kurt. Yeah, I mean, because but still, Kurt was a uh, Kurt was a very skillful fighter, but still, um, Zeke was still, and who and it doesn't really matter whether or not if Zeke was more skillful or not. Zeke was still Zeke was still like quite a bit more powerful than mm -hmm. Kurt. Strength-wise, Zeke was more powerful than Kurt, so so Zeke had so Zeke had the upper hand. Well, I mean, he was he. Kurt already said that he was dying anyway. So even if by the very slim chance he beat Zeke, it wouldn't really make a difference. You no. Know? Fucking yeah, yeah, Kurt, Kurt. Yeah, Especially like because Kurt was like, you know, he he told James that there's a power out there, and I'm sure Zeke sensed it too. That makes the two of us combined look like nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but I'd like to point out the way you said that. You said it. You said it's nothing compared to Zeke. Mm. 
It's basically, isn't it? It's, it's a whole new... We already have the story. Um, you know, we have things you planned out. You've already told me a lot of things. This is all coming down to revelations, but... What is planned, what yeah, is out help. there... What is out there is like nothing they've ever seen, basically. It's something completely different. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know... Yeah, I'm not... I don't know who the, who the new villain is, but... And I'm not gonna say anything about him, but... Still, um... I don't know much about him, anyways. But still, I'm not gonna say anything. But yeah, it's obvious. That, it's obvious that yeah, he's gonna make he's gonna make both Kurt and Zeke combined look like look like a couple of pussies. <laughs> All the more reason oh, why I'm excited also, for revelations. But mm -hmm. we we've gone over a lot of stuff for legacies, I think, and I hope you guys really enjoy all the stuff we're gonna be bringing to revelations. Mm -hmm. If you guys have anything you want to point out, like things you enjoyed, uh, things you want to see be improved on, or things you like to see, or just anything you want to talk about, really, feel free to leave a comment below, or uh, you can also go to the Zombie Attack series fan page, and of course you can send us a message, and we're gonna try to reply to them as much as we can, but. Till then, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you all in the Zombie Attack Revelations. Oh, yeah, and also, guys, if you also guys, if you feel like, you can subscribe to my channel if you can find it. I've only got, I've literally only got four subscribers. Uh, I've got, uh, yeah, <laughs> my channel is, uh, my channel is, uh, Meaning Spring, and, um, I just, yeah, my channel is Meaning Spring 68, same as my gamer tag. Granted, it just says Meaning Spring on my channel, but still, how you find it is you type in Meaning Spring 68, no spaces, by the way, and you capitalize the M. Product and advertisement. Yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, you can also ask me some questions about, about legacies if you're still feeling confused on some things. You can ask any of us about legacies, and uh, yeah, that's all I want to say. So, as Josh says, be, be sure, sure to subscribe. subscribe. Boobs. <laughs>